This is my face knowing this is the seventh out of eight episodes of Gallery Girls. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Gallery Girls Season 1, Episode 7, Beginning to See the Light. Oh, you guys, such a good episode. They're still in Miami and so much stuff is going down and I just can't wait to talk about it. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. So we have Chantal, Claudia, and Angela hanging out uh, by the pool. They're still in Miami. They went to Art Basel. Um, they're hanging out by the pool. They're discussing this pop-up event. And this was Claudia's idea, along with Amy and, Sh and Angela's kind of getting involved. Well, Chantal is so against it. She keeps saying, we need to deal with this event. It isn't going to work. And she doesn't want to do it. Um, uh, Angela's stressing about her photos being up and they don't have a wall. Well, we go over to the actual space, this Caffeina, and Amy is a rock star. Who knew? She calls. She really turned it out. She secured the location. She paid to have a tent set up. And they're making fun of the tent, but I think it was a cool-ass tent for an art show. Uh, she paid to have the wall set up. She, uh, she put, had them put it on wheels even so they could move the wall around. So that way they'll have their own space under a tent. She's paying to have lights put in. And she picked out this, she got the location for free. Amy is a rock star. I want to apologize to Amy because I feel like I talked crap about her before for being a train wreck. But I loved Amy this episode. What, I mean, what a, I mean, just what a cool person. What a cool thing to do. These two yahoos should have been over there, like, kissing her ass and helping her with anything she needs. But yet, they were sitting around talking about what to do. Ugh, Liz. We are going to talk about Liz. Whew. You know, I thought she was just this spoiled rich girl who was kind of snobby and pretty dumb and <laughs> whatever, you know. But, oh my gosh, she is such a bitch. She... We're really going to get into it this episode and next episode. She's just way too far. Way too far. Um, she focuses her bitch energy on somebody and lasers in on it. We're going to get into it. So it's Maggie and Liz, and they're at this R Rubble family event. Um, it's a family collection, and the and Liz is saying, the, I think it's Rubel's, are one of the few major collectors in Miami besides my dad. Ho, 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 ho. They're having an event, so I wanted to check it out. They have a very impressive collection. Snooty Von Snooderson. So then we see Chantal and Claudia arrive, and Liz is not happy about this. Maggie says under her breath, here comes your best friend in the world. Claudia to camera says, oh, we keep seeing Liz all over Miami, and it's getting more and more awkward. Liz to camera says, the tension is building. We're walking past each other, not saying anything. The tension is really immature, and I want to see if Claudia and Chantal, and yeah, Chantal are willing to talk. So there they are looking at work, and Liz walks up. She ends up inviting them out to this, this bar that her friend owns. She says she's got a table, and she thought it'd just be a good chance to talk. And they say, yeah, that sounds good. So then we go back to the hotel, and Chantal gets a call from Spencer. He's flying in because Chantal told him that she's been flirting for free drinks and is not wearing underwear. I think this is all in Chantal's head. She just likes the idea that she can drive men crazy. He's flying in at 9.30 and wants to know where she'll be. She's being coy about it. And Spencer's saying, what are you trying to hide from me? And they... they they ended up, it doesn't matter. He hung up. It's fine. He ends up showing up later. Then we go to that Mokai. So Liz says she's glad to be back in Miami. And this is her friend's place. So they've set up a table for her. They're giving her free bottles. It's really nice that they're doing that. Uh, Liz says 
she's just being snotty. She invited those girls, but then she's saying, hopefully the booth will fill up so they can't sit with us. It's so childish and silly. Carrie's there. The whole group's there. Um, they end up showing up, Chantal and Angela and Claudia. And it's awkward, but they end up talking to Liz. Liz says she's sick of the tension. Chantal says, yeah, I don't understand what's going on. Liz said, I thought I was really nice. I introduced myself, We went to, and then I went to your opening of End of Century. Chantal says, I don't remember. I was on a whole other planet. Claudia says, we were crying in the background to about how stressed they were about opening their store. Then Liz says, whatever. You had your shit going on. Fine. But, like, I wanted to buy stuff and say hi. And you were like, hi. And want to keep, like forcing it. It was so weird. It, seriously, are we in high school? What is this? So Chantal and Claudia end up apologizing, saying, listen, I'm sorry we made you feel whatever way. We're just, we're not just saying that. We're trying to be honest. And Liz says, holy shit, they just apologized. But duh, they should have done that months ago. And Claudia says, Chantal is infamously mean, infamously mean as well. Chantal says, I'm not mean. Yeah, you are. Liz says, I was like, do they not like me because I'm blonde? Ugh, so vapid, so ridiculous, so bitchy. Then we see the mood shift. Okay, so remember Liz has a boyfriend, Bobby. Not that Bobby. Maggie has a boyfriend, Ryan. His friend, Bobby, this douchebag right here, is acting crazy at the club. So Liz is judging them, saying Ryan's friends started acting like the immature ones, completely trash. Like, why can't they hold their alcohol? So obviously this has come up a lot for Liz. She has a sensitivity to it. She doesn't like to see when people are trash. I get it. She's been to rehab. But what do you expect when you get a bunch of 20-year-olds at a club in Miami with free alcohol? This is going to happen. So this Bobby, not her boyfriend, uh, gets tossed out. And everybody goes with him. He's mouthing off and being an ass. Yeah, I don't like that either. He's, like, annoying. But Liz takes it very personally, which we'll see in a little bit. So the, it's the next day. We see Maggie. She is going to meet up with Liz. They're both very hungover. And they talk about last night. And Liz says, did they tip the waitress? And Maggie says, no, Ryan realized it this morning. And Liz, this is where she loses her shit. I mean, that's it. For the rest of the series, this is all she can talk about. She said, I knew that would happen. Oh my gosh. Well, um, to camera, she's saying, I'm just completely shocked. So Maggie's saying, listen, Ryan and I are, we're upset with him right now. Sometimes he does this. They apologize. Liz can't even hear a word they're saying. She said, they gave us free bottles and shots. And he acts like that. How dare he? He acted like a common creature. He better hope he never runs into me again. Again, yeah, he was an asshole. He was wrong. He should have been thrown out of the club if he was acting like that. But it's not Maggie's fault. I mean, she tried to get him to calm down. She didn't mean to not tip the waitress. Yeah, it's shitty. But Liz is just way overreacting. I think her boyfriend realizes it too because he's like all right all right we get it you're mad so he goes to give her a hug and she's like no so he walks off it's one of these that's like only happy when she's miserable so she's happy right now because she's miserable meanwhile amy is working her face off again i have a whole new respect for amy she's arranging these extra lights to be put in she's handled the tent she's handled everything and i ask you where are the end of century girls why aren't they there working with her it's so crazy to me. They're the ones trying to make money off this. Angela shows up finally, but they all should have been there early to help Amy with all this stuff. It's so crazy. Amy spent all this money for nothing, expecting nothing in return, just trying to get them set up. She's just got this project, so she's trying to help them. And they act like she's that they're doing her a favor showing up. It's the weirdest thing, especially Chantal. Really bothered me this, season, this episode. So they're just... They're not even overly thanking her for all the work. I mean, they toast to her later, but it's just kind of like they expect these things. They expect these things to just happen for them with no regard to who's doing it and how it'll be done. 
Carrie is working her face off as well. She has her event tonight. It's with an artist named Mr. Brainwash. Uh, I don't really get his art, but apparently he's a thing. And she's helping out by doing all kinds of stuff, running around like a maniac, doing door work, all that sort of stuff. So it's, you know, we're seeing her work ethic versus the other girl. So it's interesting to see. Back over at the Caffeina, uh, so Angela's art is finally coming together. Because of Amy with this wall, Angela was able to hang all of her photos to try to sell them at this event. So right off the bat, we just see that they're just kind of sitting around. A bar is being installed, but they're just sitting, you know, as you do when you're trying to get customers or hustle for your business. Chantal's still being super negative, saying, I almost hope nobody comes in. <laughs> they cheers to Amy, and it's kind of half-hearted. Even Claudia, who usually has a little bit more of a work ethic, is just like, nah, I'm going to sit here with my arms folded. Amy's the only one with the sense enough to get up off her ass, go out, and try to get people in this tent. They just expect for them, they, they expect for it to fall in their lap. They're not doing anything to chase it. It's interesting because we can see how crowded the area is. There's people around. They just don't know that there's an event going on over at the tent. They're not inviting people. They're not making it known that they're an event as well. So Amy's actually out there sending people over saying, hey, come get free drinks and look at our stuff. So, I mean, good for her. Again, I... I'm proud of Amy. At least she's trying. She's doing anything she can for this event. Trying to make it successful. She's enthusiastic and fun. And the other girls are just kind of sitting around waiting for it to happen. So then we see that Jane Holzer. That one that was Andy Warhol's muse. She shows up. And she's new, super nice to the girls. She actually humors them and buys a bunch of jewelry. Which she didn't have to do. And that was really nice. She did it on camera. Very cool of her. And they just don't seem overly enthusiastic about that as well. I fear they'd be jumping for joy and, you know, getting excited about it. But no, not really. They're just having drinks and hanging out with their friends. So the event wraps up. Unfortunately, Angela did not sell any pictures. Um, and then we see them on it. What Angela says is on a mission to flirt with men. Claudia and Angela are out on the prowl, basically. Angela says, I'm on a mission to kiss somebody. And they're looking around trying to find men. So then Liz and Amy arrive. Angela's asking about last night. Liz vents about how bad the situation was. Again, just way blowing it out of proportion. Amy to camera says, oh, now I understand why Liz is being so nice to me. Because she's pissed. Pissed at Maggie. You know what? This is the same thing I say about Ramona. Ramona can only be fighting with one person at a time. She channels all her rage at one person, and then she's a kiss-ass to everybody else. So it's the next day, and we see Ryan and Maggie laying out getting some sun. Well, Liz and Bobby walk up, and Liz is just even worse today, two days later, supposedly, uh, after the event. Uh, Maggie is saying Liz doesn't want to be... She, she just doesn't want to be around us. She doesn't want to talk to me. Now I can't believe she's still mad over the other night. Liz to Bobby says, I'm actually ready to go. And Bobby's trying to tell her, just relax, enjoy yourself. And she's pouting. And Bobby kind of makes small talk with Ryan. Ryan apologizes for his friend. He says, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Liz says, I'm getting in a lot of trouble for that. I thought it was really disrespectful of your friend. And Ryan says, all I can do is apologize. He's an adult. He's responsible for himself. Liz to camera says, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry if I'm sorry. Like, he's trying to make excuses. So um, she says, your friend gets wasted and you guys don't tip on top of that. That's really disrespectful and really nervy. And again, he's like, I freaking apologize. I'm trying to make it right. It turns out he's been really trying to get a hold of the establishment so that he can give that poor waitress a tip. Then we see this weird cut scene of Angela, Spencer, and Chantal hanging out in bed. Well, we already kind of knew that Spencer was into Angela, and they all have a weird thing going on. And Chantal says, I know Spencer has a crush on Angela. Angela has a crush on me, I think. And I find it all a little disturbing. Uh, it looks like you're pretty into it. You guys are in bed together. So then we go over to Amy's parents' house. Amy is hanging out with her brothers. And her dad is a doctor, 
And he comes out to find her and says, hey, I need to talk to you for a minute. So he talks to her and says, yeah, uh, we sold that New York apartment. It's closing in two weeks, so you're going to have to move. And I'm concerned about what you're going to do. Amy's like, what? Now you told me I have to have time to think about it. And Dad says, you're 25. The question is, what career path are you going to be doing? What? How are you going to earn a living? And how are you going to be able to earn enough to support yourself, you know, by working in a gallery? And Amy's just kind of blown away by all this. It's kind of a shock. So she's got to figure her shit out in two weeks. She keeps saying, I'm, I just found out. You got to give me time. So I'm sure he ended up helping her. He had to have. I don't think you go from fully supporting your adult children to just completely cutting them off. Maybe you do. So we see Carrie talking to her boss. She's saying, all right, they're talking about the event. And he said, you know what? Everything went really well. The artist was super happy. Carrie says that she's under so much stress and she really wanted to talk to him. You know, she's doing this full-time job plus an internship. So basically she's saying, I, I have to let go of the internship. I want to devote all my time to this job. And he appreciates her. So then we see Maggie going into Birch Coffee and... She's meeting Liz, and the fuckery continues because Liz shows up, and she is, I mean, how many days has it been? It's so crazy. She is, like, still so pissed off. So Maggie talks to her and is like, are you okay? And Liz is, like, saying, I need a second. I need to talk to you about Miami situation. I'm upset. Why didn't you say anything? And Maggie says, well, it hurt my feelings. A lot of the things you were saying about me and Ryan. And Liz says, I can't believe you would do this. And it does, it comes back to you. And she explains, listen, Ryan has been calling and emailing that place since it happened to try to, again, pay the waitress. Liz says, ultimately, the responsibility falls on you. Not Ryan, because you are connected to me. And Maggie says, I've said I'm sorry a thousand times. So Liz just won't let this go. She's a dog with a bone. And it's interesting because we saw her do the exact same thing to Amy. She decides who she hates, won't let it go, and makes life hell for them. So that's exactly what she's doing to Maggie. But Amy... I'm not trying to be mean to Amy because I've started liking Amy again, but she... Amy's kind of a kiss ass. So Liz kind of let her get away or just keep, you know, decided she was going to be friendly with her again. Well, Maggie's not a kiss ass. So Liz is not into this at all. So things do not go well. It ends. It's just Maggie to camera says, when I first met Liz, we had a lot in common. She seemed nice, but she thinks she's so much better than anyone else. And now I'll never see her the same way I used to. And I think that's a pretty good description. She does seem to think she's better than everybody else. So then we're at the end of Century. And again, I love when they go over here because it's always something. Claudia is explaining things have not picked up in the gallery. They've actually gotten worse since Miami. Chantal skipped out and decided to go to Paris uh, for a weekend with Spencer. She ended up getting really sick and she ended up being there for 10 days. Oh my gosh, how do you do that? 10 days, leaving your business partner to completely run the store. So Claudia opens the mail and she sees, she's got a, I think it's a $205 bill and it's a final notice, basically. Her electric bill is, they're gonna shut it off if they don't pay anything. So she freaks out and she calls her mom and her mom is like, yeah, that happens. You have to, you know, it'll get better. You just have to stick with it. You need to stir something up and get people in. They won't just happen upon your door. And I thought Claudia's mom was really good here because that was my complaint about them at the Miami place. They just expect these things to fall in their lap. They don't actually try to go out and drum up business. So she's crying hysterically and her mom's trying to calm her down. I like I mean, I liked her mom. She was just like, listen, just go out there and hustle. You got to keep trying. You can't just cry and give up because you have a big, you know, electric bill. So uh, I wish Claudia would learn that lesson. So then we get a, a glimpse at the last episode. Aww. Uh It's Liz versus Maggie still because, again, Liz can't let anything go. So she's got a toot and a 
big old chip on her shoulder. This is the face she's making about it. Then we see Amy and Maggie making up, so that's good. I'm, I'm glad Amy finally gets something good for her. Um, we see Carrie talking about her internship. She's talking to her dad, trying to figure out what to do there. And Claudia announces she's thinking about quitting end of century, so she's confiding in Angela about it. Maggie is uh, going to take a job, it sounds like. She's, you know, interviewed at this place. She likes it. She's going to maybe take this job. So we'll see about that. And Chantal says to Claudia, you know, maybe you're not cut out for this much work. Chantal, who just spent 10 days in Paris, says that to Claudia. Okay. So... That is it for episode seven. One more episode to go, you guys. I have loved rewatching this series. It has been so much fun and such a trip down memory lane. So I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me comments below. They really help me out. And thumbs up help me out. And I just appreciate everything. Find me on here. Find me on Twitter at Real Recaps. And have a fantastic night. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.